It's time for another session with the boy. Sometimes he'll walk off like once or twice when I approach before I can get that halter on. But usually if I start petting that face, we kind of had the feet being a little bit more still too. Good boy. And the haltering has been pretty easy. That's actually the most issue he's probably ever given me with it, a little bit of the pulling away. But I do appreciate that he was responding to the pressure when it kind of touched him as he was pulling away and he stuck with me. There we go, good boy. Good boy. Pretty much immediately I will put the rope on after that and we will get to some leading and desensitizing. It's a lot of repetition right now. I would like to be able to wrap the rope a little bit more around either the leg or the belly today. Get back up into that corner, thank you. Good boy. We are extra jumpy today, huh? Yeah. Good boy. So the worst thing you can do with one that is being a little bit more jumpy than normal is also act different around them. I'm gonna keep approaching him like I normally would on a day where he's a little bit less skeptical. Right, the more normal I act, the more confidence it can give him to act a little bit more fluid in his movements. Good boy. Good boy. So starting with a lot of the desensitizing around the body. Again, there's gonna be a lot of repetition of this, so I won't make you guys watch all of it. I'll kind of just start showing you the new parts. Good boy. Now the thing with this horse is he likes to go into a little bit of a freeze state, but then when I do ask him to move his feet, he's then in a full-blown flight state and does not like to slow down or come in. So I work a lot on increasing and decreasing that energy and kind of transitions. I'd like him to be more relaxed in all of them. It's quite a bummer that my mic died and you can no longer hear what I'm saying. So I'm gonna voice over part of this and just show kind of some of the interesting areas. So I'm going back now to touching him up to his neck, something that some days he can do and some days he can't do. I wish you could hear the audio because he gets very loud and snorty sometimes when I'm doing this and you can see how rigid he is through his body. So what I'm doing is making sure he doesn't block me out on that side and continuing my same soft hand motion until he can settle a little bit more. So for him, he goes into a little bit of this flighty, snorty, bolty mode. So I have to wait for him to settle down still while continuing this desensitizing. It's interesting because he makes very slow pros uh, progress and reverts quite a bit. So, you know, nine out of 10 times I can cut his neck and he's fine. So that ordeal went on for probably about two more minutes of the running around kind of being super snorty and spooky you can see he's snorting here too just to be able to walk up and approach and kind of touch that neck I feel bad I have no background audio for this and I'm sure I was saying something that was explaining more of what I was doing rather than what I'm voicing over right now but a lot of that motion on his side and you can see he's still breathing kind of heavy and a little bit in that freeze state so my biggest worry with this guy is helping him get out of either his flight, fright, or freeze states and helping him with relaxation because he seems to shift back and forth from one to the other. 
also working on hopefully being able to pet that leg a little bit better, more down the leg to get him ready for potentially getting trimmed. And then you guys know that I'm big on the leading to break up their feet and get their attention a little bit more, get them to kind of mellow out and have a break. This helps them with that freeze state specifically. Then we go back to moving off of pressure, sending him around again, moving his feet, but separate and individual from me. And Mustangs sometimes get in this habit of facing up when they realize like when he's right there with me, his face pets, he gets to kind of relax and so facing up seems a lot easier. When I added extra pressure right there, kind of when he gets past that post, it's because his hind end came in a little bit at me that first time. Not necessarily in the way where he was planning on kicking or anything, but I don't want to have any sort of, like, I guess, neutral reaction and not react when he's doing that. I want him to know he's got to stay straight and keep that nose tipped in towards me. Um, and if that nose is tipped in towards me, that hip isn't going to be with me either. but I like working on some of the transitions with him. There we go. Especially working in the walk past that gate area. Good, so I do a little bit of work on this uh, for both sides. And I like that I'm able to bring the energy down to the walk. I feel like that's a pretty big important step for him. And I do like how he changes direction. He's pretty soft about it and doesn't put up too much of a fight. A lot of Mustangs will try to block and really keep you on one side. But he's been pretty even the past couple days. I know I have a few videos of the gray Mustang going up right now too. My guy's not quite as put off by the jumping up and down. Definitely a little bit worried about it, but not quite like the gray. He has some more interest in me when I'm doing it. Now the only difference is with the gray, I was jumping and backing up and having him come towards me. Whereas with this guy, I'm getting a little bit more in his space. And that's because his biggest difference is when you're close to him, he kind of has issues with that big movement all of a sudden happening when you're in close proximity. So if I'm standing on the other side of the pen, he's not really going to react or move. And I don't mind here that he is walking and moving his feet. Again, I'd prefer that to him just freezing up and then all of a sudden moving out of nowhere. So as soon as he starts to settle with me more on his side, I'm going to release my jumping. Now the next time that I jump up and down over here, I'm going to be looking for him to keep his feet still and also not block me out with his head. So I'll start by not correcting anything and letting his head kind of stay to the side like that if needed. And then I will gently ask him to turn it forward and that's when I will release the jumping. Which he's doing pretty good with all of this. So there's my ask for him to stay straight forward and then the release. Of course, we go over to the other side too, and I want to say this is the last thing that I work on with him today, desensitizing wise. So, same deal over here, jump in and move my feet until he wants to settle a little more, and then I release. That's going to be it for this session. So, we have some areas that are a little bit backtracked, and this guy is awfully snorty and flighty, and he really struggles to get through his fight, flight, or freeze, but we're figuring it out.